Hi everybody, Dorothy here, professional astrologer. Today we're going to talk about the super full moon in Virgo, which is on Monday, March 9th. We also have on March 9th, Mercury moving direct. So we're out of that retrograde period. And that also means we have no planets retrograde for the next quite a few weeks. I'm going to give you the time frame of all of that and how we can use it this week and even in to the coming month. All right, I'm going to talk about all of that. Don't go anywhere. I'll be right back. All right, welcome back. So remember, the written forecast is on my website. You can read it there. Join my email list. Once a month, somebody gets the free month ahead forecast, which I do exclusively for my Patreon people. So one person gets that free every month. All right, so let's get started. The big news, of course, is Mercury is going direct. For me personally, it has been quite uh, Mercury and Pisces for the most part. The last three weeks has been incredibly, um, well, mind-blowing for me. Anyways, how's it for you? I've heard a lot of comments in the last couple of weeks forecast, so I'd like to hear how you've experienced this Mercury uh, doing its thing. You know, I'm not a big proponent of everything that goes wrong during Mercury retrograde is Mercury retrograde's fault. I don't believe that to be true at all. I believe that just regularly happens. But those retrograde periods are those points in time for reflection based on the nature of the planet and the sign that it's in. And for the most part, Mercury in that sign of Pisces for the last few weeks, I know it very right now it's in the last, the end of Aquarius, but for the most part in that sign of Pisces really would bring up a lot of deep feelings and deep emotions and that we all need to look at and address. And of course, it's different for each one of us. And if you're overly emotional about something or more emotional than you're accustomed to over the last few weeks, this has been one of the reasons why. Now, when we look at the full moon, which is on Monday the 9th, and here on the east coast of the U.S., it's at 1.48 p.m. It's in the afternoon, of course. And so that full moon at 19 degrees of Virgo, it's a super full moon. So that's wonderful. Really close to us. Not as powerful as eclipses, but strong enough where we're really going to be focusing in on the details. Full moons illuminate the things we need to see in regard to the sign that it's in. This one's in Virgo. And since we've had such strong energy in Pisces, the Sun and Neptune made their conjunction on Sunday the 8th. And of course, for the most part, Mercury retrograding in Pisces, it has been a period where we can really feel overwhelmed and not sure even what to do. So the full moon in Virgo is asking us to look at the details, sift and sort through those piles. And I tell you, I literally have been doing that with all of my father's paperwork. So how are you using this? That Virgo energy, one of those most important things of Virgo is gathering the information, sifting and sorting. That's Virgo's job, creating those piles, but we also need to figure out what we don't want that are in those piles. Now, this could be, like I said, literally piles of paper, or it could just be lots and lots of information in your head. Time to really sort that out, write it out, make those piles, and eliminate things that aren't necessary anymore. Now, that's one way this can play out, because that's Virgo. Another thing that Virgo has to do with is our everyday um, living in regards to our overall health. Now, there's a lot going on. Neptune and that Piscean energy has a lot to do with uh, viruses and <clears throat> things that are unseen, such as that. This full moon in Virgo can heighten our senses around how healthy we are as individuals. It's very personalized, of course. Everybody has their own way of eating right and exercising and getting enough sleep. This is, this full moon wants us to focus on those things. This is the time of year, even without this big virus that's going on, this is usually the time of year when the just the normal flu peaks March into early April. 
So it's important for us to, with this full moon, you can choose not to, but this is focusing in on your health, your wellness, what works best for you when you know you're getting a cold, or just look at those details. This full moon in Virgo is asking us to do that. So you have quite a few things to choose from here. Let me grab my notes. I'm doing this in my bedroom. It's just there's so much beautiful sun here. My bedroom is self. So I just sitting on the edge. <laughs> I just wanted to do it here because I love to have the sun in my face, which is reflecting off my glasses. That's a picky Virgo thing I'm talking about right now. But hey, that's the way it goes. So what else are we going to do? Uh, Mercury retrograding. He's retrograde, sorry. Mercury going direct. I'm not editing. Mercury goes direct and it goes to direct. It's way, it's late, late at night. Let me see. 11.49 p.m. East Coast time. So just before midnight. So stationary in Aquarius. It's going to be in Aquarius for a few more days while it moves and slowly picks up its speed and moves forward. So Mercury stationary, those are the days that we typically will feel the most amount of frustration. So if you have a lot of things to do on Monday, just make sure you take your time. Mercury rules Virgo. That's the full moon is in Virgo. So we've got a lot of really, we've got a lot of um, support to make a list and just do one thing at a time. So if you get into that overwhelm because of all the Pisces stuff and the Mercury stationary, just get your list out and start writing out those things that you know you need to do and then just tick them off as you get into it. So you don't have to be so overwhelmed with all of the information and all the details that's in your head. It gets crazy hard. So do that if you feel that you are in overwhelm. All right, good. That's the way to use this. Now we also have during this time, let me grab my ephemeris. I'm kind of not really doing the day-to-day the -day on this, this weekly one. For, I just don't want to. Because I want us to recognize that, again, as of Mercury stationing on Monday night, um, we have no more retrograde planets. I've been talking about this since I started my 2020 forecast back in November. So this is the second period of no retrogrades that we've had this year. This will, there won't be any others that I think I know of. There won't be any others. And so March, we'll just give it March 10th all the way until April 24th. On April 24th, Pluto retrogrades. And I don't always, I don't always find Pluto stopping and retrograding personally a big deal. It's not personally. It is globally, internationally, but not on a personal note. So we could even squeak out until May 13 when Venus retrogrades. But in the written forecast, it's on my site, March 10 to April 24, no retrogrades. So I want us to look at that period as a period, an opportunity period to get a lot accomplished. This is the last time we'll have no retrogrades throughout the year. So I know I already said that. <laughs> this isn't rehearsed. <laughs> you guys know me better. So I want you to use what we really have with us. And one of the biggest things that we can use, which is so productive, is Mars in Capricorn. He is in his exaltation in that sign. And while he's moving through Capricorn and we have no retrogrades, that gives entrepreneurs, business people, anybody who has to plan things to um, propel a business forward or a project or an idea, that Capricorn, Mars in Capricorn especially, will give us a lot of incentive and a lot of ideas. So use this period to do that. Now, again, I am jumping ahead a little bit, but I want us to look at the, you know, the mo the ultimate period is going to be when we have the new moon. And because I don't always, um, I can, we can always do a lot of creating when the moon is in her waning phase. There's, there's no problem with that because usually we can figure out what we don't want and the growth comes from more space. But with no retrogrades, with Mars in Capricorn, we have from the new moon, March 24th, this is written down, but I don't know where I have it written, to April 7th. So March 24th to April 7th, we have the waxing lunar phase, right? So new moon to full moon. So, and Mars is in Capricorn for some of that. Mars is in Capricorn until March, um, it looks like, I believe, yes, it's March, um, March 30th. So anyways, all that's written in the forecast. I, I might put the dates up here if I feel like editing this. Um, we'll see. So, 
that's what this week is initiating. That's what this week is starting. The moon in Libra is March 10th through the 11th. So there we're seeking harmony and balance, right? On the 12th and the 13th, the moon enters the sign of Scorpio. And the moon being in that sign on those two days, we are able to, uh, if we spend enough time, we can go deep and meditate or just find some quiet time and do whatever research you need to do. It's a waning phase. So we're able to just go in quietly and not be overactive and discover the things that are going on deep down inside. So you can bring them to the surface and work through it and heal it and clear it. The moon of Scorpio is, is intensely emotional, but it's more like broody emotional. It's not like outwardly emotional. So use that moon on Thursday the 12th and Friday the 13th to um, experience that for yourself. And then moving on to Saturday and Sunday. So Saturday the 14th, Sunday the 15th, the moon in the sign of Sagittarius, first thing in the morning Saturday, which is fun. It's creative. It's expressive. We can you know, spend the weekend exploring things or learning something that you absolutely love or something you just want to go and experience. I've been wanting to go to this butterfly place for ages. Oh, maybe I'll go on one of those days because you can just, I can just sit there forever and just, you know, watch the nature and, and just uh, feel the heat and just enjoy myself. So find a way on Saturday and Sunday of this week to really uh, enjoy yourself. All right, guys, that's it for now. Please join me on Patreon. I have a lot of um, subscriber based um, private content that is just for you. If you're on my Patreon page, there's a few different tiers there. So come and join me there if you like. And um, yeah, if you like this, please share and comment and come to my website. I will see you soon. And anytime you'd like personal information, especially if you're feeling very, uh, your emotions are high, a little bit of anxiety going on. I can walk you through what's going on in your chart and help calm you down so you can feel more in control. That's what my job is. And that's what I love to do. So I hope I can help you with that. All right. I'm going to leave you with that. Blessings. Namaste.